Check the markets, please. We are down, but we've come off the lows of the day. We were down almost 200. Now we're down, what, 127. David Barnson's with us, the Barnson Group CIO. David, if we get... Um, so we're, we're, we're talking about the profit reports that are coming out next week. I heard originally that the expectation was for a 16% gain in profits compared to this time last year. Now that's been pared back to a 12% gain. What do you make of that? Would that be enough to propel the market a bit higher? Well, again, it's all going to come down to how earnings come in relative to what expectations are baked in. So it's not going to be about how it does versus a year ago. OK, the expectation gets priced in because markets are always and forever a discounting mechanism. They're pricing in today what they believe about the future. 12 percent earnings growth year over year is a big number. 16 percent is a bigger number. What's the market really expecting? We're not going to know next week, Stuart, because it's pretty much all financials yep. that are releasing next week. So to get a better feel for how earnings season is going to go, you have to get into some of the industrial companies that are most impacted by this trade war and you got to get into the technology sector as well and that's coming a little bit to after next week uh, okay right uh, what are you buying right now well, we, as we always are, we're looking at finding dividend growth companies that are undervalued, that their price is not reflecting their future cash flows. And the December sell-off just put some wonderful companies on sale. Uh, we still maintain a very high conviction, as okay. you know, you, around you, Blackstone. You gotta, uh, Black, okay, you've got to give me some names here. So Blackstone. I'm giving you real names here, Stuart, yep. real names. Blackstone um, BX. Last year, all of the asset managers, all of these companies that manage money, mutual fund companies, and alternative managers, they all got pummeled. One of them had a total return that was positive with its dividend. That was Blackstone. The ticker is BX, and they continue to be one of our largest holdings as they pay over a 7% dividend yield, all from free cash flow, and they're growing their earnings well into double digits year okay. over year. That's um, a name that we love. Uh, full disclosure, I bought a little Blackstone some time ago. I still hold it. Give me another name, a dividend player, where the dividend may increase. The ticker is AMJ, but it's a basket of these oil and gas pipelines. So it's an ETF that holds a lot of the MLPs, which are these master limited partnerships, the transport crude oil and natural gas. It's a big play on the Trump administration's commitment to expanding U.S. energy infrastructure. It also has over a 7% dividend yield. That dividend yield is not going to come down. It's a growth of income play, very much like Blackstone is, and wildly disconnected from real pricing. Now, a lot of people say to me, well, oil goes up and goes down, and this sector has been kind of out of favor. And I say, good, stay out of favor. I am very happy to get paid seven, seven and a half percent in perpetuity while the prices kind of dwell around a lower level. We'll Ultimately, it. it will get repriced. You're, we're going to, I believe, get a deal with China and be exporting liquefied natural gas there. We don't have anywhere near enough pipelines in our own country. So to me, AMJ represents a great value and we get paid while we wait. Seven percent. I'll take it. David, thanks for joining us, sir. See you again soon. Got it.